Okay, hello everyone. Um, let's let's start. Uh, so, I'm Piotr Koszyński, uh, the director of engineering at CK Source, so the company uh, behind CK Editor. And I have zero experience as a dev uh, Drupal developer and wrote my last PHP lines in probably 2011. Uh, but I have uh, 12 years of experience as a CK Editor developer. I uh, worked on CK Editor 4, CK Editor 5 and with the uh, Drupal team integrating CK04 and CK05 into Drupal, basically. And I'll talk today about stuff that I know something about, so basically transforming your uh, Drupal installations into more collaborative um, containentic experience. And a bit of history first, so uh, CK04 became the default editor uh, for Drupal 8, then in Drupal 9, uh, CK05 was added as the option, uh, and in Drupal 10, CK04, uh, CK05 became the default editor, and CK04 is an option. You can install it still as a contrib module. Uh, however, CK04 uh, came, uh, will come to the end of its life, together with Drupal 9, actually. Uh, this will happen at the end of 2023. Uh, and if you are stuck with CK04, if you need it for any, any reasons, you can uh, you may be interested in the extended support model, but this is, of course, a premium premium thing. Um, so, yeah, well, what's actually the big deal about CK04 and CK05 uh, for some, some more context? So basically, these are completely separate projects, completely separate products. Uh, and they share mainly the, the name and the team behind uh, and nothing else. Uh, we started CK05 in 2015 uh, and it took us like eight years to get to a reasonable feature parity with CK04. So it was a huge, huge investment. And uh, for you, probably the biggest and the most important difference will be how both editors handle the data that you feed into them. So for CK04, you, if you feed HTML and a sort uh, of HTML uh, blob into it, and uh, it's being converted into a similar DOM structure. There are very little differences there, and then you can get the HTML back, and it will be very similar uh, if you really push hard and try uh, to feed in very complex HTML. It will still be, uh, it can still preserve most of it. With CK05, it's a bit harder because we have this custom data model in the middle. So not anymore a DOM that's very similar to HTML, but a custom data model, which was designed with uh, rich text in mind. And uh, if you think about everything that you can do with HTML, uh, like web apps, uh, very dynamic pages, and, um, then this rich text flavor of HTML will be a subset, a small subset of it. And this is, if you are using CK04 or CK05 to do that, then you'll, you're on the safe side. However, if you're trying to fit in like entire pages, then it's, it's going to be complex and, and risky. Um, and unfortunately, if you were using CK04, then you will need to migrate to CK05, and there's no other uh, way to say it. this is a, a content migration. And we did everything we could, the Drupal team as well, to make this migration as smooth as possible for you, but it's still a migration. And the only thing I can say here is that we'll not repeat rewriting CK Editor. Uh, this was a huge, huge investment, uh, but there were also important reasons when we, uh, why we did that. And um, the most important reason was actually collaboration. So we wanted to invest into enabling users to collaborate in CK Editor 5 to enable multiple people working on a piece of content. And if we talk about collaboration, uh, then we can divide it into like three steps. So first there's this creative process where, uh, for instance, content authors write the content, then there is reviewing, so uh, someone may leave comments, someone may leave uh, suggestions, and then the content, once it's done, is being published. Uh, however, of course, the process is not that simple. So after someone left you, uh, left you a review, you may need to get back to writing your content. And the same may happen even if the content is already published uh, because it may be outdated or misleading and, and, and someone may notice that. Uh, and of course, in larger organizations where there are many stakeholders, there can be multiple people involved in the process. And it's really, really messy. Uh, so, and the problem that we've observed with the tools that are out there, and this is not specific to Drupal, is that there are 
that those tools, CMS and other under systems, don't enable the collaborative process to happen in those systems. So we observed many companies moving the, that part into Google Docs, Word, Notion, now or any other system that do a better job here. Um, and unfortunately, if you can do actually that outside Drupal, then you will need to copy the content back to Drupal. And this is where things become hard because this is actually another content migration. And if you do it every time you, you uh, have to publish the content, then something's wrong and, uh, and it's, it's becoming tricky. So there must be a better way. And actually I wanted to do a live demo now and let's see if internet is back on my phone. If not, we'll have a screencast and it's not back, so we'll have a screencast. Uh, can you see that? Sorry, give me a second. Yeah, uh, so here you can see two, two browsers because I'm locked as two different users into Drupal. And let's add some content, uh, some article in the right browser. So yeah, we are testing RTC and you can see how many attempts I have to do to actually record anything. Let's save that piece. And yeah, we needed to save it to have the URL so we can actually open the same piece of content in another browser. And once it loads, you can actually see the avatars of two users because two users are editing the same piece of content. Uh, so let's say now that one of those users will just paste some content or you can actually create it in Instigator. Uh, to start the work and you can see that the content is being repeated on the in the second browser We can save some revision for it We can do other changes like resizing an image uh, Save some uh, more revisions And let's now uh, ch uh, Turn on the track changes mode. So we'll be suggesting changes not making make them in the content yet. So let's say I don't like this quote. And as you can see, uh, the selection of the user in this browser is actually reflect, reflected and rendered here. Uh, so I press backspace and the content is marked as a suggestion, suggestion to remove. Uh, then let's add some comment. And let's switch to that user. Let's say this user is now doing some other work. Of course, they can do the work at the same time, but it's hard to actually show it live. Uh, so let's say I uh, accepted the suggestion and I'll reply to, to this comment. And once I'm done, let's open the revision history. And here we'll be able to see very granular changes done in the content, also attributed to the specific users that did those changes. Uh, so we can see that they did everything that happened one by one. Uh, we can also compare specific revisions and uh, if you, I cannot show this right now but actually, but if you uh, highlight the change, you will see what part, what, which part of change was done by which user. Uh, so sorry, it wasn't a live demo, but the demo gods are not with me apparently. Let's get back to the slideshow. And I need some water. So yeah, no demo. Uh, back to some uh, theory. Uh, so the collaboration can be split into two types. So there's this synchronous collaboration that's real time, that's non-blocking when multiple people can work at the same time on a single piece of content. But collaboration can also happen in an asynchronous way when it's still blocking, but you can still like leave comments, then the other person can respond to these comments, then some other person can apply changes. So this is th those two modes make some sense. And the typical collaborate, collaboration features will make sense in, uh, in both of those modes, except this presence list, so these avatars, of course, that uh, make little sense in asynchronous collaboration. Um, and let's try to do something productive again. And uh, this is probably a moment where I have to pause. These are premium features. These are stuff that we add to Secator, stuff that thanks to which we can actually 
maintain Cicator over many, many years. Uh, so to test those things, you will have to start a 30-day uh, free trial, uh, no credit card required. Um, and yeah, let's see that now. So there's the premium features. Um, module page, there are installation guides here and I really recommend if you try it at home, doing actually uh, it through this installation guide because I'm gonna skip some uh, less important things. Um, but yeah, some highlights, so you install the package via Composer, uh, then you will see the new modules available in your admin panel, so you can filter by premium. You can install those pieces that you need. Uh, then you will have some new configuration options and the important part will be uh, the general settings of the premium features where you have to uh, copy the, the keys and everything from uh, CK.5 dashboard. And again, use the guide because uh, it's not that simple, um, but it's quick. Anyway, and one thing I wanted to highlight here is this little option at the end. Uh, if you check it, then uh, the, because there's very little spa space for CK editor in the admin panel and we need more space to accommodate the sidebar and everything, so recommend checking it. Uh, and yeah, once you do that, you will see four new buttons uh, that you can add to your toolbar. This is uh, comments, comments archive, track changes, revision history, and there are some additional configuration options for, for that. Uh, yeah, and if you did that, then you'll already be able to have multiple people working on the same piece of content, uh, no additional steps required. Um, so yeah, getting back to some theory, how does it all work? Um, so for the asynchronous uh, blocking collaboration, the situation is simple. Uh, all content will be stored in your Drupal installation. We need just some additional entity types to store metadata such as comments, revision history, and suggestions. Um, but the problem with this mode are those awful conflict messages. And uh, there's, in this case, there's, it's, it's hard to resolve those conflicts because we have more metadata. Uh, and we couldn't figure out yet the way to uh, make it work uh, seamlessly in Drupal. Uh, so I find the synchronous collaborations or the real-time collaboration far superior here. Um, and in this case, the editor content, the, the HTML blob is still stored in Drupal. However, the metadata uh, like comments, revision history, uh, and uh, suggestions are stored either on Cicadus Cloud or a self-hosted installation of it. And the process how the data is being handled works like this. When a first user starts editing a node, then uh, the content is being sent from Drupal to a collaboration server and the collaboration session is being started there. Then the user applies some changes to the content and these changes are Immediately, immediately sent to the server. So the server, the cloud server, always keeps the latest version of the content. It's always up to date there. Uh, when next users join, the content is being loaded to them, not from Drupal, but from the collaboration server. So they always get the very latest version of the content with all the changes applied, even though they haven't been saved to Drupal yet. Then, when a user clicks save, the content is actually saved to Drupal, and whenever everyone is done and, <clears throat> and uh, there, were, there are no active users on the collaboration session for 24 hours, the HTML content is be being deleted from the cloud, but the metadata is, is kept because it has to be used for other sessions. Um, and in this case, you may still see those errors. We haven't figured out yet the way to actually completely get rid of them. But the workaround is super simple. So when you see that error, you have to uh, refresh the page. And when you, when you refresh the page, the content is loaded to you not from Drupal, but from the cloud. So you, you get the very latest version of that content. And then you can safely click save and no changes will be lost. Uh, so yeah, what else? Uh, for the collaboration features, I haven't mentioned uh, permissions yet, so you can have a specific group of users being only able to uh, comment the, on the content or apply suggestions, uh, whereas other users can do, for instance, everything. You can also have notifications via email on uh, comments and suggestions for your content and mentions uh, of your 
name in, in the comments themselves. There are also a uh, couple of other interesting features out there. Um, two that I would highlight are the import from Word because uh, it's a service that lets you just uh, upload a Word file. And if you had a Word-centric workflow where the collaboration part of the work would happen in Word and people would use it to comment on the content, create suggestions, then you can actually import all that into, into Drupal with the, with the comments and suggestions. And the very uh, recent addition, AI Assistant, uh, that we released just uh, two weeks ago or a week ago, and it will be available uh, in the uh, premium module as soon as Drupal updates to Secator 4, Secator 5 version 40. And that's it. I wanted to have more time for questions, so thank you, and if you have any questions, then ask. So, at some point, oh, sorry. Uh, uh, so, how would uh, Secator work uh, to edit docx files? Uh, let's say, probably you have docx files somewhere, and just just that you want to start editing them. Yeah. So, um, you can do two, two things. You can copy the content from Word, or you can import. Import will preserve more content, uh, but cop like copying is is a free feature. It's by default in Secator Five. Uh, importing is a premium service, uh, but it allows when you, when we have the file and we can proce process the file, we can uh, preserve more formatting and also more, uh, and we can preserve those suggestions and comments. And at this point, you actually have to work, let's say in Drupal or any other Secator installation. And if you need Word back, uh, then we uh, have export to Word as well. Uh, but for the time being, you will, you'll be locked into in, in, in Drupal, for instance. So if you would sell this to the people who want the, like a, not this kind of replacement, would they be unhappy about something? Would they be disappointed to do something different? So there's no full, uh, full parity between uh, Word and, and Secator. Secator, we never wanted to make it actually like a Word replacement, but uh, in many, many cases, we have many, many uh, organizations using Secator for document editing. Uh, the level of features that we have is sufficient. So it really depends on what you actually need. If you have like very rich, templated, structured uh, Word files, then you may need, you may miss some some features. But uh, many will will work. There's also um, a pagination feature, which will, uh, if you have everything configured correctly, it will render. Uh, page breaks uh, automatically and uh, and a couple other things. Yeah. Okay. So the question. Okay. Uh, so the question was, what happens if you start using the premium modules and then you then you stop? What happens? So the HTML, the, like the root of the content, is always stored in Drupal. We don't take that uh, outside. So if you stop uh, using premium features, you will still have the content. You will not get uh, the comments and revision history, but the content will be will be there. Uh, so the question was uh, that I showed uh, editing a node directly in admin panel, and if I got it right, what is it possible also to have collaboration like in an inline mode? Uh, and the third one I didn't. Okay. 
okay, so when it, uh, it didn't happen, you know, pop up. So I don't, I'm not 100% sure about the answer because I, I don't know Drupal uh, that well, but uh, I definitely saw the collaboration features used like in a, a comment part, for instance, so they can appear there. In an inline editing mode, I don't think uh, they will uh, load, but if there's, like, we, I probably haven't heard that feature request yet, but if, if we hear, then maybe it's, I mean, maybe it's actually easy. So the first question was how, whether there's autosave. Uh, so when, let's say, people are collaborating on the content and they forget to click the save button, right? Um, so we, as a CK editor outside Drupal, we have an autosave plugin. I don't know if it can be installed into Drupal, uh, but probably yes. But uh, an important thing here would be that if, let's say, two guys are collaborating, working on a piece of content and both, I don't know, drops because internet connection ends, uh, the content will be still stored, all the changes, even though they haven't been sent to Drupal, they will be stored on the uh, cloud uh, server for 24 hours. So when they join again, they can still get the very, very latest version and save back to Drupal. And I don't see reasons for not implementing autosave once those uh, once we figure out how to get rid of those uh, conflict uh, messages, because probably if two, two users had autosave enabled, they would just be getting them on and on again. Oh, and okay. I will find you after my talk. <laughs> okay, figure it out. Uh, So uh, we are running out of time, uh, but I can stay here for however, how long do you want? So I'll be uh, in front of the room and we also have a booth at the end. Uh, there are some useful links and I will post them on my Twitter. Uh, thank you very much.